In this video, I'm gonna be going over exactly how much dividend income I received from a $207,000 account in the month of October. And to analyze this, we're gonna be jumping into my ticker data do-it-yourself investor toolkit and breaking it down on my investment dashboard, my dividend dashboard, my dividend calendar, my daily dividend calendar, and like always, I also wanna project out what my portfolio will look like in the future so I can see exactly how long it will take me to achieve my long-term goal of one day living off dividend income. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of the spreadsheets you see in this video and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financials straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. I'd also like to say thank you to Seeking Alpha for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Now let's go ahead and jump in. Now to start off, I want to make it completely clear what the long-term goal for this portfolio is. And like I just mentioned, it's to one day live off dividend income. Now typically there are two different ways you can achieve this. Some people will focus on high yielding investments while others will focus on dividend growth stocks. And if you have a long-term time horizon, for the most part, dividend growth tends to be better. So I consider myself a dividend growth investor and I'll be showing why that is more later in the video. But let's go ahead and actually jump into how my portfolio is performing as of right now. So if we go ahead and zoom in, let's start breaking down the current value of my portfolio. We can see as of right now, I'm sitting at about 207,000. So not a lot of gains over the past month. If we look at how the markets performed in the last month alone, we can see it's actually down 0.03%. We started to see some gains for the majority of the month, but it looks like we've seen a pretty large sell-off on the last day of the month. Now, why is this? Well, if we look at the heat map of the S&P 500 on the last day of the month, we can see some pretty big sell-offs from some huge stocks. Microsoft, for example, down around 5.54%. NVIDIA, down 4.33%. If we come over here, we can see Apple's down, Google's down, Meta's down by a large amount, and so is Amazon. These are some of the largest companies in the entire world. And Microsoft is actually one of the largest positions in my personal portfolio. So I'll be talking about how that makes me feel just a little bit later. But if we go ahead and jump back over to my portfolio again, we can see as of right now, I'm up around $44,762. But if we also include my realized gains, as well as the dividends I've received, I'm up close to $56,000, which is a return of close to around 34.5%. So overall, from a total return standpoint, I'm really happy with how my portfolio is performing. There's a huge misconception that people who focus on dividend stocks, who buy dividend growth stocks, only buy them for the dividend yield, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Before I even pay attention to the dividend or anything else, I assess the quality of the business. What's the company's ability to grow their free cash flow? Because in the long term, their ability to pay dividends and grow those dividends depend on the company's ability to increase their free cash flow over time. So for example, if we look at my growth chart, I've seen some pretty amazing gains from companies in my portfolio. And in fact, I have four companies that have seen gains of over 100%. Broadcom, my best gainer, I'm up over 232%. We can see Jeffrey's Financials, 112%. We have Caterpillar, 116%. And then we have JP Morgan, 113%. When I bought these companies, I bought them because yes, I do believe they helped me achieve my long-term goal of living off dividends, but I also felt like they were quality companies trading at a great price who would also have the ability to grow their earnings over time. And we can see I have plenty of other positions that have done very, very well. For example, come over here, we can see Apple at 65.43%. Come over here, Microsoft, one of my largest positions, currently up around 55%, even with the huge sell-off in the last day. And there's plenty of other companies that have done really, really well, as you can see here. So yes, living off dividends long-term is the goal, but when you buy quality companies at the right valuation as a byproduct, you're gonna see a lot of share price appreciation as well, which is what's happened to my portfolio. Now, if we start to dig into this a little bit more, we can see my current allocation. I'm about 7.2% in cash and stocks at around 92.8%. So I am pretty heavily allocated, but I do have around $16,000 in cash sitting on the sidelines waiting for opportunities right now. Now, that being said, I think most people would consider this market pretty expensive at the moment. If we look at the past year for the S&P 500, it's up around 37.26%. Now, that doesn't mean there's not opportunities, but it is quite a bit harder than it was just a couple years ago. For example, in 2022, we saw the market decline by around 20%, and I was able to add some great companies to my portfolio at really good prices during that time, which is part of the reason I have some phenomenal gains that we just saw. Now, if we come down here, we can see total holdings currently sitting at about 28. I plan on reducing this to around 25 to 20 over time. And if we come over here, we can see my cost versus market value chart. Now, obviously the thing that stands out here is SCHD. First off, yes, I've seen pretty good gains from SCHD, but you'll also notice it's obviously by far my largest position. Now, if we come over here to the growth chart, we already broke this down a little bit, but I wanna point out my three purchases, my three new purchases I've made this year. First off, come over here, we can see waste management. I added this at the beginning of the year. I talked about it. 
talked about why I like the company. 75% of their revenue is considered recession resilient. Their dividend yield is low, but they have the ability to continue to grow that dividend payment for a very long time. This company is not going away anytime soon. And because I bought in at a good valuation, I'm already up close to 40.5% on this position. So I'm really happy with the returns on this one. Now closer to midway through the year, we can see I actually added Louis Vuitton, LVMHF. And as of right now, actually down around 5.72% on this position. Now, when you think about it, if you're gonna be owning a company for the long term, immediately when you buy it, if it goes down a little bit, that really shouldn't concern you whatsoever. And in fact, you should consider that more of a buying opportunity because if you're planning on holding it long term anyway, and you trust their ability to grow free cash flow and grow their dividend payments, that gives you more opportunity to add capital to them over the long term, which is actually what I've done some of over the past year. Now, the last company I added this year that's new to my portfolio was UNH. I'm up around 25.35% on this position. Now, if we jump over to my dividend breakdown sheet and come up here and plug in UNH, you'll be able to see why I bought this stock. Again, thanks to ticker data, all this data will automatically load in. And we can see the company does have a low starting dividend yield, close to around 1.5%. But again, I'm buying these companies not for the dividend they're paying today, but I want to buy them for the dividend that they're paying 10, 15, or even 20 years from now. And UNH is a great example of this. Look in 2013. They're paying about $1.05 per share in dividend payments. But look what it jumped all the way up to in 2023. $7.29 and as of right now, $8.40. So their dividend has nearly 8 x in just a 10 year time period. And the beautiful thing about this is this is completely backed with their free cash flow. Like I always say, if you want your portfolio to be a dividend growth machine, then the holdings in your portfolio need to be a free cash flow growth machine. And look at the free cash flow growth they've seen over the past decade, going from around 5.8 billion to in 2023, over 25.6 billion. And they're only using around 26% of their free cash flow to pay out dividends, meaning they still have around 75% left over to reinvest back into the business and turn growing free cash flow and in turn growing those dividend payments. So you begin to see why dividend growth is such a powerful factor in the compounding effect taking place with your portfolio. So now if we scroll up here, we can simply see my diversification with each of these positions. SCHD, the dividend growth ETF, by far my largest position at about 46.6%. And then my two largest individual positions are going to be Microsoft at about 6.6% and Visa at about 5.8%. Now again, these are both huge dividend growth stocks. For example, we can see about a month ago, Microsoft announced they're going to be increasing their dividend by around 10.7%. So that is a double digit dividend increase, boosting the amount I'm going to receive in dividends over the next year and moving forward. And Visa just did the same in the past month. They announced a 13.5% dividend increase, boosting my dividend income moving forward. And so finally, if we scroll down, we can see my stock allocation by industry. Now, ETF isn't the best way to technically break this out, but SCHD is a very well diversified ETF. But other than SCHD, we can see technology makes up around 15% of my portfolio. Financial services, around 11%. Real estate, around 7.4%. Consumer cyclical, around 6.4%. And if we come up here, consumer defensive at about 4.6 and healthcare at 3.9%. Now there is more we can touch on on the investment dashboard like my future portfolio outlook, but we'll come back to that later in the video. But I wanna to get to what everybody wants to see and that's how much dividend income I received last month and how much I'm gonna be making moving forward. So let's go ahead and jump over to my dividend dashboard. And if we look right here, we could see in the month of October, I received around $288.49 in dividend income. Now, at first glance, you're thinking, okay, a portfolio value of around $200,000. That doesn't seem like a lot of dividend income in one single month for that portfolio value. And you're kind of right, but you're not getting the full picture yet. Now, first off, there's a few different things we have to point out. We can see my dividend income month over month actually fluctuates quite a bit. And in fact, my average monthly dividends is currently sitting at about $517.62. So I recently hit a huge milestone averaging over $500 every single month in dividend income. And for example, last month I received $1,081 in dividend income, and it's pretty clear we're starting to see a trend of my dividend income really starting to break out, really starting to see that snowball effect take place. But even then you might be thinking, I'd really like to see more than $517 on average from a $200,000 portfolio. Again, you have to keep in mind, what's the differences in dividend growth and high yield investing? Because if I wanted to, I could plug all my investments away into higher yielding stocks and immediately start receiving more dividend income. But what's the downside of that? And that's a great question and it's something you need to understand. So let's look at this quick comparison of dividend growth versus high yield, assuming we're not reinvesting dividends. 
Well, we can see if we bought high yielding stocks, immediately we would start receiving more dividend income. But over the long term, dividend growth starts to pay out more than high yield investments. Again, because those stocks that we just saw, like Visa and Microsoft, continue to pay out more in dividends every single year at a very high rate. Now you're probably thinking, okay, well this example is if you're not reinvesting dividends. What if we do reinvest dividends? Reinvesting those big dividend payments would make a big difference. And you are correct, but the underlying point is still true here. We can see in this scenario, yes, it does take dividend growth a little bit longer to surpass those higher yielding investments, but over the long term, it does clearly do that. So again, I'm not buying dividend stocks for the dividend they're paying right now, but for the dividend they're paying 10, 20, or even 30 years from now, I'm buying for the dividends I'm gonna be receiving in this time period right now. And I know dividend growth stocks will maximize my dividend income over the long term. If I bought higher yielding investments, yes, I'd undoubtedly be making more in dividends right now, but I wouldn't be making as much later on. And that is a key concept you absolutely have to understand. That doesn't mean higher yielding investments are bad. It completely depends on your goals and your circumstance. If I was planning on living off dividends in the next two to three years, I would definitely be using more higher yielding investments. Now, if we keep moving forward, we can see my expected yearly dividend income now sitting at about $6,211 and my all-time dividend income received is almost over $10,000 since I started tracking this. My portfolio dividend yield on cost is currently sitting at about 3.83%. Now, yield on cost is gonna be a little bit different than the dividend yield. Yield on cost for me will be higher because my companies continue to increase their dividend payouts. If we look at my portfolio value over time, we can see there was not too much of a difference over the past few months. So I went from around 208,000 to last month, 206, and the month before that, 202. So yes, I have been seeing some growth, but I've actually contributed very, very little capital to my portfolio over the past few months, much less than I typically do. Much of the growth that my portfolio has seen has come from reinvesting dividends and also appreciation from the stocks in my portfolio. And so if we come down here and look at my projected annual dividend income over time, in my opinion, this is such an important chart, and it's actually one of the most beautiful things about dividend investing. Now, typically when we look at a stock's price chart, we're gonna see a lot of fluctuations. We're gonna see the stock go up, and we're gonna see the stock go down, and hopefully over the long term, it continues to trend upward, even with some dips along the way. But the beautiful thing about projected annual dividend income is unless you make changes to your portfolio, it should only go up over time if you're buying quality stocks. And that's what we're seeing with my portfolio. Even when my portfolio value goes down, like for example, in October of 2023, my portfolio dropped a bit, but my projected annual dividend income continued to climb higher and higher. The only reason we see a slight dip right here is actually because I sold out of some higher yielding investments in order to reallocate that capital into dividend growth stocks, which again will provide more dividend income over the long term. So again, this is what's so beautiful about dividend investing. Your projected annual dividend income can climb every single month, even if your portfolio value is fluctuating up and down. Now, finally, we can see my dividend income by industry. Now, this is actually more important than a lot of people realize, and we typically look at how our portfolio is broken down by allocation, but we don't look at our allocation of dividend income by industry. And this is important because if all your dividend income is coming from one single place, then you might have too much exposure to that industry and you have a lot of risk. For example, we can see even though if we go over to my investment dashboard, real estate only makes up around 7.4% of my portfolio, we can see on my dividend dashboard, real estate makes up around 13% of the dividend income that I receive. So you can see where there's some differences here that you really have to understand if you wanna analyze your portfolio. And finally over here, we can see my dividend income by stock, how much each of these dividend stocks is currently paying me for the year in dividend income. And keep in mind, even if I don't buy more of this stock, over time this will continue to grow because these holdings are increasing their dividend payouts and also because I'm reinvesting my dividends. Now, before I move on to my dividend calendars and daily dividend calendars, I wanna quickly show you some of the earnings report from the holdings in my portfolio. There are some pretty big ones. For example, Visa, one of the largest positions in my portfolio, saw a really nice earnings report just the other day, saw beats on top and bottom lines. And if we look at Visa, we can see over the past month, they're up around 5.93%. If we look at Altria, they saw beats on top and bottom lines as well. And this is actually a high yielder stock that I own, but they also increase their dividend payouts over time. Now, a lot of people have been critical of Altria saying it's in a dying industry. But when I initially looked at this position years ago, when I was adding it to my portfolio, I don't think the underlying fundamental supported this. For example, if we look at the past five years, the performance actually hasn't been that good. And I started adding this stock to my portfolio when it was trading in the low 40s. I just felt it was too undervalued for a stock with a high dividend yield that could still increase their dividend payouts over time. 
And we can see after this monster earnings report, the company's trading at $54.61 and it's actually up around 8% on the day. That's a huge gain. And so that's two stocks in my portfolio that are up quite a bit over the past couple of months after smashing earnings report. But then I wanna point out Microsoft because this is a unique situation. They saw beats on top and bottom lines. And I actually covered this earnings report just the other day in a video and why I liked it so much. But despite the good earnings report, we can see Microsoft is selling off quite a bit, down around 5.6% on the day, trading at $408.30. Now, while it's easy to get excited when our stocks go up, if you're buying quality companies for the long term, you should get even more excited when they go down. And this is because of many reasons. First off, you're going to be able to buy in at a higher starting dividend yield. You're going to be able to buy more shares. And then obviously, it creates a better valuation. I first started buying shares of Microsoft when they were trading in the low 200s a few years ago. We can see right here. Got down to around 220 or $230 per share. And then for the first time in a long time, I started adding a few shares after it dipped from its all-time high of around 460 to 470 below 400 and it's starting to get close to that range again so i'd love to see this company go even lower so again you have to understand market psychology yes your stocks going up feels great i love it as well but i much prefer my stocks go down if i believe in them long term and when you look at the underlying fundamentals of microsoft in the earnings release they just put out i don't see anything changing this company is continuing to grow free cash flow continue to grow revenue and earnings therefore will continue to grow their dividends making it a great position in my portfolio now I want to jump over and look at my dividend calendar, but before we do that, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, Seeking Alpha. Seeking Alpha is one of my favorite investment research platforms, and I use it in nearly all of my analysis, and I've been using it for years. Seeking Alpha can be a great way to get quick insights into things like the company's financial statements. We can also see how they've done in their recent quarter's earnings, and for example, we can see upcoming earnings estimates for the company. Microsoft is projected to grow at double-digit earnings rates. We can easily get a dividend breakdown for the company, whether we want to see the yield, dividend growth, dividend safety, or even the dividend history, and we can also see a quick snapshot of the dividend summary. If we click on valuation, we can get some quick snapshot valuation metrics, such as the price to earnings non-GAAP for trailing 12 months, or if we want to look at it forward-looking, or if we want to look at it with generally accepted accounting principles. If we keep scrolling down, we can see things like price to sales, price to book, and price to cash flow. But one of the things that's really cool about Seeking Alpha is that we come over here and click on peers, we can see how Microsoft shapes up against some companies that are similar in structure. And if we scroll down, we can see the price differences, or we can look at things like revenue growth year over year. It's very easy to see with Seeking Alpha. And if we continue to scroll down, we can see how they shape up in many different metrics. So again, I love Seeking Alpha. I've been using them for years, and you can get a seven day free trial and a discount at the link in the description. Now, if we jump back over to my dividend calendar, one of the reasons I love dividend calendars, and I think everybody should be using one if you're tracking dividend income, is you can easily see your dividends month over month, and how much each position has paid you in dividends over time. And most importantly, I always talk about this, you can see dividend growth over time. This is one of the easiest ways to see it. And realty income is always the easiest example of this because they pay out dividends every single month. So for example, when I started tracking this, realty income in January of 22 was paying me around $5.83. But we can see every single month, this number is continuing to increase. And the reason is, they increase their dividends on a yearly and actually quarterly basis. I reinvest my dividends every single month as well. And sometimes if the price is right, I add new capital. So we can see every single month that dividend is increasing. So as of October of 2024, Realty Income paid me around $27.65. So we've come a long way from a few years ago. Now let's look at each dividend payment I received this month. We can see starting out Coca-Cola around $21.57, a big dividend payment from MO Altria at about $95, like I just saw, Realty Income at about $27 to $28, and then a big almost $120 dividend payment from Beachy Properties, $13 from JP Morgan and $10.23 from Jeppy. This one's actually on the chopping block. I'll likely be getting rid of this in my portfolio at some point in the future. We keep scrolling down and we can see $1.69 from my small Cisco position. I'm up quite a bit on this position, but it is a small one, another one on the chopping block. So all those combined add up to around $288.49. So if we jump over to my daily dividend calendar, it's a similar concept. If we zoom out just a little bit, basically we can see each day how much I received in dividend income. So if we look at the month of October, we can see I received some on the 1st. The second was a good day at almost $130. The 10th was a good day because of my Altria payment. And then we just have three dividend payments right here that added up to around $42.51. Now, I love being able to see what days my dividends are coming in, but in reality, it's not too important. If we look at my 2024 total dividend payments now, it's sitting at 4,575. So with two months to go, I'm already far ahead of where I was in 2023. And if we look at where I was in 2022, 
I'm way ahead, even with two months to go. My highest day so far this year was around $890, but in December, when SCHD pays out their Q4 dividend payment, I expect my highest day to be even higher than this and also have my highest month of dividend income ever. So now the last thing I wanna go ahead and point out is projecting what my portfolio will look like in the future. And I actually think this is pretty important to do because you hear a lot of people say, oh, I wanna live off dividends in five years or I wanna live off in 10 or 15 years. Do you actually have any idea whether or not you're on pace to do that? And that's exactly why I project out my future portfolio to see what's a realistic goal for me. So as of right now, my starting portfolio size is around 207,000 and my average monthly contribution, I'm hoping for it to be around 2,500. Now, I know that's quite a bit more than most people, but keep in mind, when I started out, I was only contributing $50 a month. Now, the past couple of months, I've definitely not contributed that much to my portfolio, but this is my long-term goal. Keep in mind, as you get older and your income increases, you should be contributing more to your portfolio. Now, that being said, I'm assuming a price growth rate of 7%, dividend growth rate of 7%, which some people argue that's actually conservative because dividend ETFs like SCHD have done double digits in both of those ranges over the past decade. So assuming a starting dividend yield of 3.5% as well, I'm gonna project out what my portfolio will look like over the next 30 years. Now, before we even begin to look at this, you also have to understand inflation compounds over time just like any other investment. So if we just make a simple assumption, cost of living of $4,000 and inflation at 2%, you can see your cost of living is going to increase over time. Now, I think many people think inflation will be even higher than this. Maybe it'll be three or 4%. Obviously, it's been pretty high for the past few years, but the historic average is around two to 3%. But with all that being said, if we jump over to my live off dividends analysis, where the red line passes the black line, again, black line is cost of living, red line is my monthly dividend payments. This is the point at which I could live off dividend payments forever. So how far out is this? If we go ahead and come over here and zoom in, we can break it down. If we start to scroll down, let's look and see where I am about five years from now. Five years from now, it looks like I'm gonna be receiving around $1,800 in monthly dividends with a monthly cost of living of around 4,500. So I'm definitely not quite there yet. If we keep scrolling down, we can see after 10 years, I'm still not there, but monthly dividends will be around 3,600, so obviously that's definitely enough to just work a part-time job at that point if I wanted to. Now, if we keep scrolling down, we can see right here, this is the point at which I could start living off dividends because my monthly dividend payments is larger than my monthly cost of living. Now, the most common question I get is, wait a second, if I stop reinvesting dividends, would I still be able to live off dividends forever? And that's a really good question, and it depends on one single thing. If your dividend growth rate is above the rate of inflation, then you'll be able to live off dividends forever. And on the flip side of that, if your dividend growth rate is below the rate of inflation, eventually your cost of living will once again pass your monthly dividend payments, which is actually pretty scary to think about. This is another reason that I love dividend growth stocks so much. So if we wanna get a high level overview of what my portfolio will look like moving forward, let's jump back over to my investment dashboard and look at my future portfolio outlook. Five years from now, assuming I'm reinvesting dividends, I'd be making eighteen dollars to $19,000 a year in dividends, and if I don't reinvest dividends, it jumps down to around $16,400. So at first glance, yes, that's a pretty big difference, but not a major difference. But look if we start to zoom out just a little bit more. At 15 years, I could be making $71,000 if I reinvest dividends, and then if I don't, all the way down to 47000 So that's a big difference. But when you look at it on a 30-year time horizon, this is where it gets really crazy. 30 years from now, not reinvesting dividends. I'd be receiving around $158,000 a year, but if I do reinvest dividends, it jumps all the way up to nearly $370,000, more than double. And again, that shows the importance of reinvesting those dividend payments up until it's time for you to live off dividends. So when I assess where my portfolio is currently at, I think I'm in great shape to achieve my long-term goals. I'm still formulating my portfolio for the long-term and plan on getting rid of a few positions that I don't personally feel completely aligned with my long-term goals. For example, like I mentioned, Jeppy. That's probably not a great position considering my long-term goals. It's good for maximizing immediate dividend income, but I wanna focus more on dividend growth at this stage. Again, like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financial straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. Again, thank you to Seeking Alpha for sponsoring this video. And like always, thank you guys so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.